a new lesson from simple biology and the lesson today about inheritance this is part one in this lesson we will define the terms inheritance and chromosomes differentiate between gene and allele explain how a protein is made explain how dna controls cell functions describe the inheritance of sex in humans and define haploid nucleus and diploid nucleus and let's start have you ever wondered why you look like your parents? Have you ever wondered why you have special characteristics from each parent, like your mom or your dad, curly hair, skin color, maybe the height? All of these under one title, which is the inheritance. So if this kid here inherited some characteristics from his dad or from his mom, these characteristics are inherited through what we call genes. So inheritance is the transmission of genetic information from generation to the next generation. Sometimes it's referred to as heredity. So it's the transmission of genetic information from generation to generation. And the study of inheritance or the study of heredity is called genetics. So where are these special characteristics uh, found? Where is the code for these characteristics? it's in the chromosomes and this chromosome is found inside the nucleus of the cell so all our cells all our cells they have nucleus or nuclei so in the nucleus we have the chromosomes in a human cell we have 46 chromosomes 46 of these small structures they are not that very small by the way let's take one of these chromosomes and magnify this chromosome you will find out it's a thread. It's a long thread of DNA. So it's a long thread of DNA. This thread is coiled and super coiled with the help of proteins to form the chromosome, which is packed inside the nucleus. As we said before, we have 46 of these chromosomes inside our nuclei. If you take just one section of this chromosome one section of this thread is called a gene so a gene is a segment of the dna it's a segment of the dna so as we said before the chromosome let's magnify it this chromosome is a thread like structure made up of dna and the genes are segments of this DNA. So in the chromosome, you might have a thousand genes or thousand genes. You might have more than thousand genes. We have around of 22,000 uh, genes in our cells. So the DNA, the DNA wrapping around protein, they make together, they make the genes. So the genes are segments of DNA. So the chromosome is a thread-like structure of DNA carrying genetic information in the form of genes and a gene is the length of DNA it's a segment of DNA that codes for a protein so this gene has a code the code is made up of nucleotides and this code is read in the cytoplasm by a machine called ribosome to make a proper protein Talking about genes, genes, they have different versions. These versions of the gene are called alleles. So allele is one of the versions of the gene. For example, the coat color of this rabbit can be gray or can be white. So the gene that code for the coat color is the gene. While the version of that gene can be gray or white, this is the allele. So the allele shows the variants. The allele is one of the variants of the gene. So the variation is shown by the alleles. Now I want you to look at this slide. Here we have the male chromosomes and the female chromosomes. So this set of chromosomes are taken from a female nucleus and this set of chromosomes are taken from a male. Look at these two different sets. Can you find out what's the difference between the two? If you look carefully, you will find out there is one major difference between these two sets, which is something here. 
it's the XX and the XY. So the males, they have X and Y chromosomes, while females, they have X and another X chromosome. So technically, both males and females, they have X chromosome. But what is special in the male, what makes the male a male is the Y chromosome. So this small chromosome makes the, all the differences between the two genders. So can I say now that the male determines the gender of the baby? Yes, this is the Y chromosome, which makes the difference. The male is the uh, parent that gives the male gamete, which contains the Y or the X. If the gamete contains Y chromosome, if the sperm contains Y chromosome, then the baby will be a boy. If the sperm contains X chromosome, then the baby will be a girl. So again, the father is responsible for the sex determination of the baby. But I have a question here. What is meant by a sex-linked characteristic? Sex-linked characteristic. As I said before, the genes are segments of DNA on chromosomes. So we have genes on regular chromosomes and we have genes on sex chromosomes. X and Y are sex chromosomes. So the genes that are located on sex chromosomes, they code for characteristics that we call sex-linked characteristics. Now, here we will talk about how the protein is made how the protein is made. As we said before, the genes are located on the DNA. These are segments of DNA. So here I have a segment of the DNA called the gene. This DNA is in the nucleus and cannot go out of the nucleus. It has to be copied. So it's copied into a sin single stranded mRNA. So mRNA here is a copy of that code in the gene, in the DNA. This mRNA, which has the instructions to make a certain protein will be moved to the cytoplasm to be translated into a protein. Remember, I said translated because protein is made up of amino acids while RNA and DNA are made up of nucleotides. These are not the same. So the code which in DNA is written as nucleotides, it's copied into another code which is mRNA, also nucleotide, this is translated into an amino acid sequence which together they make a protein and the first process is taking place in the nucleus copying dna into mrna while the second process translating this code into a protein is taking place in the cytoplasm so let's write uh, the process in details The gene coding for the protein remains in the nucleus. mRNA molecules carry a copy of the gene to the cytoplasm, and the mRNA passes through uh, ribosomes in the cytoplasm. So here in the cytoplasm, the machine that translates the code in the mRNA to make the proper sequence of amino acids is called ribosome. So the ribosome assembles amino acids into protein molecules, and the specific order of amino acids is determined by the sequence of bases in the mRNA. Any change in the gene will change the code in the mRNA, and this will change the sequence of amino acids in the protein will be different protein or a faulty protein. So this is how DNA controls cell functions. How? Because it controls the production of proteins. So DNA control all the cell functions by controlling the production of the protein. Remember, the proteins are enzymes. The proteins, they are channels in the membrane. They do most of the functions of the cell. So controlling how the proteins are produced controls the, D, uh, controls the whole cell activities. Now, let's talk a little bit how on how cells divide and make more cells, make new cells, how we grow, how we make bigger, uh, how we get bigger in size. 
this is not by making our cells bigger this by making more cells we all start from one cell which is the zygote the zygote is the result of fertilization between the sperm and the egg and this is our first cell we all started from one cell which is the zygote but this zygote divided by mitosis to make many more cells and these many more cells become specialized in the beginning they were stem cells and these stem cells get specialized into specific cells like muscle cells like nerve cells like skin cells and we became what we are right now so the process of making many cells from one cell or the process of increasing the number of cells it's called mitosis so mitosis is the division of the nucleus which results in identical cells which is typical in tissue growth and asexual reproduction so this boy has trillions of cells and these cells have the same DNA, the same genetic material. But you're asking yourself why this boy has different structures like ears, hair, eyes. Those are different in structure. As, uh, and he has all the same DNA. This is because not all the genes in the DNA are expressed. Like in the eye cells, certain genes are expressed making proteins and other genes are not. In the hair cells, like different genes are expressed and the others are not. So this makes the differences in structure in the boy, even though he has the same number of chromosomes, the same genes in all his cells. So some genes are switched on in some cells, switched off in uh, other cells. So all body cells in an organism contain the same genes, but many genes in a particular cell are not expressed because the cell only makes the specific proteins they need. Another type of cell division is meiosis. And meiosis reduce the number of chromosomes into half. So any body cell contains 46 chromosomes. This means two sets of chromosomes. And each set is called N. So 2N, this means diploid cell. Di means 2, diploid, diploid cell. And when the cell has only one set of chromosomes, it's called haploid cell. So if I take a sperm, haploid, and another, and an egg, which is also haploid, by fertilization, they give me a diploid zygote. So one haploid cell and another haploid cell, Together, they make a diploid cell, which is the zygote. This is our first cell. Do you remember that? The first cell that we started from, the zygote. It's diploid. The gametes are haploid. They are produced by a process called meiosis. In a diploid cell, there is a pair of each type of chromosome. And in a human diploid cell, there are 23 pairs. 23 pairs. In each pair, one chromosome is inherited from each parent. So gametes are haploid and they are produced by meiosis. Egg cell and another haploid sperm cell by fertilization, they make a diploid fertilized egg cell. Now let's check your understanding uh, from this lesson. I want you to place a tick in the boxes uh, to show which features occur in which type of nuclear division let's answer produce gametes is it mitosis or meiosis it's meiosis produces genetically different cells meiosis as well produces genetically identical cells this is a property of mitosis produces new cells during growth and repair of damaged tissue we said growth mitosis replaces cells also mitosis used in asexual reproduction this is also mitosis Thank you for watching this lesson. Subscribe to get more videos and watch part two of this lesson in another video. Thank you.